to some, you know, average Cambodian people, um, the idea can be a bit hard to understand. So, what do you mean by, you know, using art as a tool, you know, uh, to combat climate change in this uh, kind of uh, arena, Professor? Yeah, I would maybe not say a tool can sound very instrumental. I just think uh, art is also a language that may be sometimes more tangible to people. If you hear a piece of music, we just heard about a music festival, or like food, there's also the art of food. Um, it makes things more tangible. And when we talk about climate change or climate science, we talk about um, a very expert, compartmentalized knowledge. And art is more a language that speaks to a wider audience. So I wouldn't say art is so just for a specialized group. And I also wouldn't call myself an art expert. I come from a normal family, but I studied art. And so I also saw the potential of art actually to speak to people. So for me, it's very important with certain issues to reach out to people, to be more inclusive. And I think people rather go to a festival than step into a university. But uh, Professor, like, can you give like maybe one or two examples, you know, when art touches human being more than, you know, let's say the dull number that is presented on the sheet, something like that. Like, what are some of the examples that art really go deep inside a human uh, brain? Uh, yeah. I mean, again, we just heard about sound art, sound like art. to be reminded uh, on um, the sharing of music, experiencing. It sometimes relieves us also from the concern, but it also can remind us on our old history, on, on how did we live together, how did we dance together, or shared um, the annual calendar. Yeah. You know, like so, we have. I just mentioned one artist, Amata Asienza. She developed together with her brother, who comes more from legal frameworks. They developed a fisherman folks day in the island in Batayan in the Philippines. Because the fishermen, because of lack of fish, but also it's not such a desirable profession anymore, also started to lose the pride in the profession. And so they created the decoration of their ships and encouraged them. And so there is now a fisherman folks day once a year and all the small boats are decorated. The whole community comes together. Now tourists start to come and look that up. So they make... Um, is thinking about like what is a fisherman why is there no livelihood for the fisherman anymore they make it more accessible to people and then they said oh we understand there is less fish oh we understand they don't make money anymore so why would they want to be fishermen so it also starts a conversation about our livelihood yes professor i mean as you also work you know a lot in the western hemisphere and you know now you're based in singapore i mean from your perspective do you think you know, the art community in Singapore is progressing at a good... Oh, sorry, the art community in ASEAN is progressing at a good rate, I mean, so far. Art is very resilient, <laughs> so I think the, art, the arts are always progressing in, a, in an amazing and in a, in a very diverse way at every place. There might not be everywhere infrastructures. There's maybe not everywhere a museum or a biennale or a festival. But there was hardly a place where I didn't see art. Mm -hmm. And it can be music or poetry or people write. Today they make films. Yes. Even in the most remote island, people are making TikTok films. Mm -hmm. So That can be art also. That is also art. Mm -hmm. I think all forms of expression can be art. And I think there is nobody who can decide exactly this is art and this is not art. So it's like mixed together, quite complex in its I think nature. at every place, it's also different what is accepted as art. So I think it's, I would rather say also using the tools to express, and that can be, in, as we heard this morning, can be poetry, it can be sound, it can be paintings, but it can also be a film. Or today people use Instagram and photograph. That also can be a form of artistic expression. Yes, Professor. And uh, for today's, uh, let's say, seminar or conference, we can see, you know, technologists, we can see poets, we can see artists coming together. So for you, Professor, like, what is the significance, you know, of this event, you know, in, in, in the art community of ASEAN as a whole? I mean, for me, it's, it's wonderful that we can bring artists together from different parts of ASEAN, because, I mean, travel, air travel is expensive. 
So to have this opportunity through Connect ASEAN to afford air tickets for them, sharing the time. But what is wonderful, we also have policy makers here. We have people from the government here. What is very important that we bring people from different um, stakeholders together. We have like community leaders here and to put them together on the table, we have an architect or multiple architects here to also share what we can do together. What can we do if we put our skill sets together? What can we achieve together? That is for me the big possibility here. And to do this across ASEAN, um, a region that is most exposed to the climate change um, and climate change impact is already um, experienced. We have cyclones, we have tsunamis, we have like heat waves, etc. What can we learn from each other? I think is very important. This is why I'm so grateful for such opportunities where we really can be together and think about how to mitigate the impact of climate change. Yes, Professor. And uh, it could be a message, you know, for the stakeholders in Cambodia because, you know, recently, uh, you know, the, the contemporary art community in Cambodia is you know gradually growing and you know more and more people especially young people like us you know we are more and more informed about contemporary art although it can be a bit abstract but you know we start to learn about it uh, one by one so from your uh, let's say perspective uh, professor um what are the important elements inside a nation that allow or you know uh, improve contemporary art you know like what are the elements that make it thrive I think first of all, um, the understanding that art, and I mean art and culture, I would say now in the wider sense, are such an important element of our lives. It's something that we share. It's something that uh, also make life maybe, yes, less utilitarian. Mm. Uh, we, we don't want to just work, work, work. I see. It maybe it's also important to have moments of rest uh, if we have traumatic experience, moments of healing if we have anxieties, like during a pandemic, what gives us relief. So I think the arts are very important in all of this. And again, as I said, it's not one form of art. It can be so many different formats and languages to reach out to one another that really also remind us that we are sharing not only a nation, not only a region, we're sharing only one planet together as a human species. Yes, Professor. So uh, thank you, Professor, for your uh, informative answers during the interview. And uh, I hope you have a, place and a, pl a pleasant stay in Siem Reap. Professor, thank you. Yeah, I thank you also because uh, we were here last year. I come to Cambodia more than 10 years. Um, oh, it's really amazing also to see the developments. I visit many artists always. And just, uh, some artists here in Siem Reap that just started a school. So it's also interesting to see the development. I hope there will be a museum for contemporary art. I hope the art education will expand because it is also a, a way to make a living. Yes. So it's not just to entertain people, but it's also um, a place and, and a workspace for many young people. At, at the same time, it's also like to diversify, you know, the country's uh, sector, you know, to make like it's, it's like a, a garden full of many flowers yeah it is yes yes professor. thank you also so thank much thank you professor